I'm Jim Gordon, and I'm here at the offices of the Richmond Sentinel to bring you an important segment on the 2022 municipal elections here in Richmond. We've invited all the candidates to share with you, our viewers, why they're running and who they are and why they want to serve the city of Richmond. Every candidate that accepted our invitation will be given the opportunity to share their views. Get to know the candidates here in Richmond and make an educated decision before you vote. Now, let's get started. Well, joining us now is Evan Dunphy. He's running as an independent. Evan, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're quite welcome. Okay, as we're doing with everybody, a little bit about yourself and why you are choosing to run. Yeah, so I'm born and raised in Richmond. This is my home. I grew up here, and uh, I've chased my dreams here. Mm -hmm. Spent the last 20 years of my life um, pursuing my dream of winning the Olympic medal and was lucky enough to fulfill that dream last Excellent. summer. And yeah. now just taking the skills that I've learned, the hard work, determination, goal setting, integrity, sportsmanship, teamwork, all that stuff, and taking those lessons I learned in sport and you know, trying to apply them in this, to this new vision of, uh, of making a Richmond that's on track for everybody. Okay, very good. Um, we're asking the same three questions of everybody that sits in that chair. Uh, let's start, uh, start first with crime and safety. It is, of course, a growing concern in not just this community, but every community in BC. Uh, if elected, and again, as an independent, you get to say what you want to say. Uh, give us some thoughts on what you would want to do to uh, try to uh, uh, calm uh, the citizens and, and with concrete uh, implementations. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think uh, the biggest thing that it comes back to is that people are losing their sense of community. So when people lose their sense of community, uh, there's, there's less accountability. Mm -hmm. um, our streets feel a little bit emptier than they used to. Opportunity to, right. to um, get up to nefarious purposes. Um, I, I really think the, the cornerstone of any, any policies that are, that are rooted in making our community safer have to be rooted in building community, bringing people back into every part of Richmond. You know, so many, so many suburbs in Richmond, so many subdivisions in Richmond have lost populations. They're they're feeling empty. Right. If we can bring people back in, bring young families, bring seniors back in, bring bring a mix of everybody. Those kids are going to be out playing on the street. Those are eyes on the street. They're going to be watching the street. You know, when I was growing up playing street hockey eight mm -hmm. hours a day, no one was doing any trouble in our neighborhood because we had eyes on that street. So right. that's really the, the the first pillar that I want to build around is, is bringing back that sense of community. Richmond is, in terms of metro, very very safe still, um, and so I think if we can focus on that community aspect, we'll we'll be able to thrive. Uh, let's talk about, you were talking about families, um, communities. Um, another big uh, concern for a lot of people, uh, not just in the city, is uh, attainable or affordable housing. Whatever word you want to put before housing, it is a growing concern for citizens. Again, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the way that we are set up right now, we have over 75% of our residential land reserved for 3,000 square foot detached homes. Right. That you need, you're basically saying, if you don't have many millions of dollars, you can't live in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we need to change that. We need to go into the foundations of our land use policies. We can't just tinker around the edges. We actually have to go foundationally to the, to the, to the building blocks and set those up on the right path. We need to build the, fam the housing that young families need. Uh, you know, our schools are emptying out. Yeah, We're gonna have yeah. to start closing schools. So we gotta bring young families back. They have to be allowed in every single neighborhood in Richmond. And I truly firmly believe if we build the housing that young families need, you know, 1,500 square foot um, little ranchers, 1,500 square foot apartments, townhouses, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that's the kind of housing that will work for everybody. That's the kind of housing that seniors can downsize into. That's the kind of housing that um, our restaurant workers in Steveston um, right. can live in and stay and actually work here rather than getting pulled downtown. Um, so, you know, my, my vision is really building a city that works for young families, and I believe if we do that, it'll work for everybody. Uh, about 20 seconds left, and the last question is kind of, you do what you want with. Um, it basically talks about what, uh, is there another issue that's extremely important to you that you would like to make our viewers aware of? Well, as a professional pedestrian, <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, you know, obviously expanding our, our active transportation lanes, um, making it easier to get around either walking or rolling, um, and prioritizing more space to, to sustainable forms of transport. That's a, that's a big pillar in my, my platform. Evan Dunphy, he's an independent running for council. Thanks for joining us, Evan. Hey, thanks for having me. And that does it for this edition of the Richmond Senate. Spotlights on the candidates that are running in the uh, next election, October 15th. Please educate yourself and vote on that day. For more details and uh, if you want to see more videos, please go to the Richmond Senate website. It's richmondsentinel.ca.